Alright, so in this video we are going to look at the first question um, from the external exam of the IB from November 2012. Um, this is the higher level paper 3 from math um, from time zone 0. And this is, paper 3 is based on the option topic, which in this situation is Sears and differential equations, um, which the IB now calls the calculus option. Uh, the question reads, a differential equation is given by dy dx is equal to y over x, where x and y are greater than zero. Um, what's really great about this question, what I really like, is how it asks the candidate um, to solve a differential equation, the same differential equation, in multiple ways. Um, that uh, looks like the IB examiners were really looking for, do candidates have a solid understanding of the differential equations topic. Um, in terms of part A asks um, to solve the equation through the separation of variables. And in terms of a separable differential equation, this is pretty much as easy as they get. Um, what we're going to do, we're just going to multiply both sides by dx and divide both sides by y to get all of our variables on one side. Do those operations and what we get is um, dy over y is equal to dx over x and this is equal to 1 over y dy is equal to 1 over x dx um, why did I write it in this form? because it might be a little more um, recognizable as a common integral now that we have both, uh, the both variables on their own um, side, we can actually just integrate. Um, the 1 over a variable is on the list of common integrals under topic 6 in the formula booklet. Um, so let's just integrate, and what we get is that 1 over y dy is the natural log of y, 1 over x dx is the natural log of x. Um, the reason I use parentheses here and not absolute value bars as given in the um, in the formula booklet. I always remember that plus c. Um, we know that x and y are greater than zero. Therefore, um, I can use the parentheses instead of absolute value because we know that they're always going to be greater than um, always greater than zero. Um, another nice little trick that I like to use a lot uh, if I use red. Um, there's a specific um, formula in the booklet. Um, I believe it's uh, like topic 1.3 or something. It's, in, it's under topic 1 on the first page. And that says that the log base A, let's say, of B is equal to X. And you can rewrite it so that A to the X is equal to B. Um, what we know is that um, that uh, the natural log is a log with the base e. Let me rewrite that. Log base e of x plus c. Um, so if we look at this and we're trying to figure out how we can we transform this, well. Um, we have, let's say, log of b base a, that's our log of y base e, that's equal to x, which in this case is the log of x base e, plus c. We can rewrite this. So our base is a, in this case it's e, let me choose a different color here. So we get um, e to the x, which is this whole thing here, so e to the natural log of x, plus c is equal to y. Um, what's really nice here is if you know your laws of exponents is that this is the same thing as saying e to the natural log of x times e to the c. And that's equal to y. And this right here, e to the c, that's a constant. So we could say k times e to the natural log of x is just going to be x is equal to 
why? And the uh, question asks for this uh, answer in the form y equals f of x. So we could say f of x is equal to kx. And that is part A. Alright, so if we're looking at part B of the first question from that specific paper, it says solve the same differential equation dy dx is equal to y over x um, by using the standard homogeneous substitution of y equals v x. Um, so I guess the first step that we would take is how can we get that into here? Um, something that we could note is that v is equal to y over x. If you divide both sides by x, look, there's y over x. So um, what we're going to get is dy dx, which we have to change in order to fit that, and I'll do that in just a second. And that's going to be equal to v. Um, when we're setting up dy dx, we have dy dx, with the standard homogeneous substitution y equals vx, um, what we're really doing is derivative of vx with respect to x. Very simple product rule. Um, so we get derivative of v by x, um, so derivative of the first times the second, plus the f uh, plus the second, let's say, times the, um, I'm sorry, plus the derivative of the second times the first, which in this case is just v. So in the end, we're going to get dy dx x plus v, and that's equal to dy dx. So let's just write that in. dv dx x plus, uh, plus v is equal to v. Um, very simple. We can subtract v from both sides. And what we're going to get, dv dx is equal to 0. Um, so what we still have is the two variables, in this case v and x, they're still on the same side, what we can do is multiply both sides by dx. So we get dv is equal to 0. Now remember that x is greater than 0. So really what this comes out to be, if we were to integrate both sides, what we're actually going to get is v equals um, some constant k. And um, what we know, if we go back here, v equals, um, well, I'll use a different color for this, we have v equals y over x. So um, I'll write it over here. y over x is equal to k. Therefore, y is equal to kx. Um, and then they say they want it in the form of y equals f of x. So f of x equals kx. And what you'll notice is that this is the same um, solution that we get from part A, which is good because um, it's the same differential equation. We're just solving it in different ways. All right. All right, so for part C of number one on this paper three, um, it asks us to use the integrating factor method. If you look under uh, topic nine, I believe, in your formula booklet, um, there's actually a form and a formula for the integrating factor method where it says y prime or as I will write it um, dy dx plus p of x y is equal to q of x. Um, if we write in this form then um, what we're actually going to get is that dy dx subtract well, uh, subtract y over x from both sides, and this is what we're going to get. Um, again, because the integrating factor form requires us to write it this way, um, 
uh, I, I simply subtracted y over x, put it onto this side so we could get it into this specific form. Uh, to actually find the integrating factor itself, um, i is our integrating factor is equal to e to the integral of p of x. Um, and for us, p of x is equal to negative 1 over x. So the integral of p of x with respect to x um, is equal to the integral of negative 1 over x is equal to negative um, negative times the negative integral of 1 over x. So this is equal to negative um, ln of x using parentheses because x is greater than 0. Um, laws of, uh, of logs, so we get ln of x to the negative 1 power. i is equal to e to the ln of x minus 1 power. Because we have e ranged to a natural log, this cancels out. i is equal to um, x to the negative 1 power, or just 1 over x. Very important that we have our integrating factor now. Um, so if I go back over to this side, what we're going to do is multiply the integrating factor on to both sides of this equation. Um, and what we're setting up, I'll explain in a minute, is a product rule situation. So we have dy dx times 1 over x minus y over x times 1 over x is equal to 0 times 1 over x equals 0. Um, if you remember that the product rule is equal to y equals u times v, y prime is equal to u prime v plus u v prime. Um, if we were to integrate both sides of this equation, it's I, what I like about this is how it kind of really is and why it works because it's a reverse product rule. If we have, let's just pretend u is y and v is um, our, let's say, p of x. Um, so what we're actually going to get so with the product rule situation kind of here, a reverse product rule, we have y equals u, v, uh, u times v and so, if we look at this, we can take away that, well, um, we have the derivative of, let's say u is equal to y then. So we have the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative, derivatives of the second. So what does this tell us? Well, if we were to integrate this whole thing um, and then integrate this side, what we're actually going to be left with, um, let's see if I write a different color here, um, brown, um, is we're going to get y times, um, let's just write it x to the negative 1 just for simplicity, um, is equal to the integral of 0. The, in order to get 0 as a derivative, you need to derive a constant. If we're integrating 0, that means it's going to be some constant, but we don't know what that constant is. So let's just say k. So um, if I were to rewrite this, this is y over x is equal to k. Therefore, y equals kx. And as the problem uh, requests, writing this in the form of y equals f of x, f of x is equal to kx. Um, Integrating factor method is very simple. Um, if you really know um, how to get the integrating factor using e to the to the integral of p of x, if you can get into this form, and then understanding why this product rule type situation works. Um, and now for part D of this question, um, it's this this uh, specific part is actually giving us a particular solution for our differential equation. Um, it tells us if, 20, if y equals 20 when x equals 2, find y when x equals 5. Um, okay, good. Um, so what we can do is just use our 
uh, answer from the previous section, y equals kx, plug in some numbers, let's say 20 is equal to k times 2, divide both sides by 2, we get k is equal to 10, very poorly written, k equals 10. That's very good to know because now in this next part we can say y is equal to 10x. So if we have y equals 10 times 5 when x equals 5, then we'll get y equals 50 when x equals 5 because our constant is k. That's uh, question one of this.